Good afternoon everyone and welcome to your very own Baiju's 9th and 10th grade channel. I'm Aishwarya and in our class today, as per popular demand, we are back with part 2 of how to draw biology diagrams easily, life process edition. Because I know in life process especially, we have a lot of diagrams and we tend to get confused as to which diagram is important, which diagram we need to know to draw and what is necessary for diagram based questions. Which is what we are going to be understanding today. But of course, before I get started with that, here's a very, very big happy children's day to all my beautiful, wonderful students who are here because of course, this is your day. You are what drives us every day. Right? If we come to class, we are so excited, it's because we get to meet you. So keep up the enthusiasm that you have, your quirks as children, and you know how you come up some, with some witty comments, right? Keep it all up, right? And of course, this day is your day, and we are of course going to celebrate together more of course at 6 p.m. But happy Children's Day, everyone! Good evening. I can see that a lot of you are here already. If some of your friends are yet to join the class, please let them know. Share the link with them as well, right? Yes, all right. So can we very quickly get the comments on screen? I am not able to see the comments. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, what is at 6 p.m. today? See, 6 p.m. today is going to be a Children's Day celebration that is going to be there, right? Yes, all right. So we have Baiju's Ki Patshala. Yes, I'm able to see it, but we'll have to increase the um, font size. Just give us a moment. We're just setting it up, okay? Yeah, so of course, 6 p.m. today, Tarana Ma'am, Ankita Ma'am and I are coming live to celebrate Children's Day with all of you. Yes, so do not miss out the 6 p.m. class today, okay? Yes. So now, of course, before I get started, I hope my audio, my video and my screen and what I'm writing on the screen is visible to all of you. If it is, please do give me a thumbs up and we'll get started. We'll not spend too much time today. Okay, we'll get started very quickly. Good afternoon, Shweta. Good afternoon, Abhinav, Lakshit, Mantesha, Anvisha, Re uh, Reshmita is here. Good evening. Okay, uh, can we get this screen off? I'm able to see another screen overlapping my comments. Yes, okay everyone, uh, there is a screen for viewer. Yes, thank you. Hello, hello Anushri, hello Navya, hello Gurnam, yes, okay. So we were just setting up the technical nitty gritties and now we are good to go. Now of course before I get started, I hope all of you have liked the video, right? And I hope you have subscribed to our channel because your 9th and 10th grade channel is a premium destination where we offer you all these amazing classes so that you get in-depth understanding and more importantly, we are preparing you for boards 2023, right? Right? It's already November, boards are just around the corner and we will try our best to make sure that you all ace it, right? So it's going to be a team effort, yes? So do not forget to hit that subscribe button, do not forget to like the video. And a quick reminder for all of you on Baiju's Ki Part Shala, the session that's happening at 6pm that I was telling you about, right? So of course as you know, three of us are coming live where we are going to be celebrating Children's Day together. Yes, how much time is it going to take? See, I I mean earlier of course the first session that I took took of about one hour. But this I will try to wind it up in half an hour to 45 minutes. Yes? Okay, now before I get started, I hope all of you have your textbooks open with you, right? You all have your textbooks with you? Yes? Do you all have your textbooks? Hello feelings, hello. Could you please tell me your name as well? Okay. Yes, you all have your textbooks with you. Brilliant. So now what I'm going to be telling you about is on the important diagram. So make a mark, all right? So you can mark it down as I tell you that these are important for diagram based questions. These are important to learn for drawing, right? Is this important for grade 9? Uh, primarily this is for grade 10. But if you want to be a part of this class, why not? Yes, don't worry. Okay, thank you, Bhumika, for telling me your name. Okay, so this is going to be all the important diagram from life processes. Yes? So you can put a tick mark. Okay? Yes. So first up, let's go to page number 97. Uh, 
Let's move on to page number 96. Okay. So all of you go to page number 96. And in page number 96, if you see figure 6.1, right? So figure 6.1, very, very important because this question or this particular image was there in your sample paper, right? And I'm sure if you would have checked out and solved the sample paper, you know that figure 6.1, which is the cross section of leaf is important. So make a note, put a star mark next to it as I have done because this will be very, very important. Okay. Yes. I will use white color. Okay. I will use the white color. So this is very important. This will come for diagram based questions. So if I put DBQ, that means it is di diagram based questions. Yes. Now, on the other hand, when you look at figure 6.2, that is again the difference between, a, you know, before and a variegated leaf before and after. Right. So this again is important for your diagram based questions. They will ask you in your MCQs. Right. All your experiments that are there in the chapter will come for MCQs. OK. Or it will come as a diagram based question. Similarly, if you look at figure 6.3, that is the stomata. Stomata right here, again, 50-50, most likely come, it will come for diagram based questions, but always good to learn how to draw. So I'm going to put draw as well as learn it for diagram based questions. So this chapter, the diagrams in this chapter are very, very important. And again, figure 6.4, which is all in page number 97, right? So page number 97, you have 6.3 and 6.4. Important again for your DBQ, that is your diagram based questions. Are you all with me? Are you all with me? This is all regarding plants, right? So this is all regarding nutrition in plants. Yes. Harshit, I am not ignoring you, right? Please don't feel that way. Okay. Very good. Quickly moving on to the next one. We are going to go on to page number 98. Right. So page number 98, everybody turn your pages. And figure 6.5 that is there. Yes. So figure 6.5 is nutrition in amoeba which is holozoic nutrition in amoeba. So very important diagram based questions and again learn to draw this because at times they may ask you. See there are some which is sure shot and some which are 50-50. So I will always tell you no. I will always tell you that learn to draw. There's nothing of sorts wherein you know that if you learn, you're like, ma'am, I learned it, but it never came. You'd rather be grateful that I learned it already in the beginning and on the off chance that it comes, you will know, right? That is why everybody, I always tell you, which even I feel it's like even 20% the off chance it comes, I make you mark it in the book because I don't, it's always better to be prepared than to not know what is there, no? Yes. So now moving on to page number 99. Yes, so page 99 that is there. If you see figure 6.6 .6 is the digestive system. Now this is super important. Okay, super, super important because a question on digestive system is bound to come. Yes, now it could be anything. It could be a diagram based question. Or at times they may ask you to draw. In the recent times we have not really seen them asking, uh, you know, the students to draw during the boards. But you never know. They may ask you to draw it. Okay. Which is why it's very important. Okay. Yes. Now moving on to page number 6. Um, let's go down all the way till page number 101. Are you all with me? Yes. Are you all with me? Page number 101. What diagram do you see? Can you tell me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. What diagram are you able to see? We see figure 6.7, right? So in figure 6.7, you have the lime water test. So this lime water test again is something which we use to detect. No, we detect uh, the presence of carbon dioxide in the exhaled air, right? Pichkari activity. Exactly. Yes. So here, as you know, in the lime water, this again is a DBQ. Okay. They'll ask you as a diagram based question or they'll give you this and they'll ask you for the inference. What is the observation you see after carrying out this activity? Yes. I think I have missed Ayush's comment. Mom, is it possible to complete science? Okay. I think I missed that. Ayush, you can send it to me once again. Okay. All right. Moving on. Now we will go all the way till page number 
let's move down to page number 104 okay page number 104 yes yes abhishek hello maine aapka naam le liya now you have human respiratory system okay which is figure 6.9 now this here is the human respiratory system yes now human respiratory system again the chances of them asking you to draw the whole respiratory system is very slim okay but at the same time diagram based questions can come mainly but also learn to draw this diagram here it's not given clearly but this is something i will like to add you know add on is the alveoli and gaseous exchange so at times if you are given a question on gaseous exchange or sometimes again there are chances you will get a diagram based question or they may ask you to draw a single alveolus right so they may ask you to do this the chances are there which is why i am marking it down for all of you yes are we clear okay hello kamna hi ashi you are all in class i'm so happy but i'd like you all to focus in class as well because i know that you know all of you would have just come from school some of you would be like ma'am you know just we came back but it's okay i'm not going to make you do anything hefty just put tick marks and put important right yes kamna today was a very hectic day i do understand but that's why i'll not take too much of your time here right this is a simple thing where i want you to put you know star mark or mark the things that i'm telling you to do very simple and easy yes okay now we will move on to transportation now how many of you are scared about transportation yes ma'am transport heart ka diagram how do we draw this how are we able to do double circulation yes how are we able to do that how many of you are worried about this because today i will actually teach you how to draw the diagram of the heart also because a lot of you have asked me for a very long time ma'am how do we draw the diagram of heart and it's come to me multiple times which is why i will be learning this okay yes oh ma'am it's easy that is great then right that you are very you're finding it easy yes so let's move on to page number 106 right so in page number 106 you have figure 6.10 and you have figure 6.11 now both of these will come for diagram based questions primarily but they may ask you to draw as well yes so how many of you have like in your pre i mean in your midterms right did any of you get this question on drawing that heart diagram or to draw the double circulatory system did any of you get it in your pre i mean in your midterm exam yes can you tell me no right no you did not get to draw okay mantesha has got it so i just want to get an understanding right of how many of you here right now have it yes we got it in half yearly okay some of you have got it while some of you have not got it mainly yes labeling is important right they may ask you to label that's where your diagram based question comes into the picture right so they'll ask you either to label it which is very very important so you should learn the labelings of all the systems okay write this down for every organ system you should know the you should know the labelings of it right and we should understand it so learn these two things very very thoroughly okay now we will move on i mean in page 107 as you know there's a blood pressure um, so you have the sphygmomammometer but you don't need to worry too much about sphygmomammometer we can move down all the way till figure number 6.13 that is in page 110 are we all in page 110 where we have 6.13 yes 6.13 that is the human excretory system now this can come for diagram and how many of you have got this in your exam to draw the human excretory system or moving on to page 111 right so if you go to page 111 you see that there is 6.14 which is the structure of nephron right this also mainly comes for drawing or you can get this for sure no you have not got it but abhinav has got it yeah so it's again a mix 50 50 right some of you would have got this part some of you have not got it but we will try to tackle all of these together yes thank you colorful life thank you so much okay 
Now, on the same page, if you see, in more to know, right? So, you have more to know where you have the diagram of the dialysis machine. Same page, yes? Now, in this more to know, it is important that you are able to identify the difference between a dialysis machine and the blood pressure, okay? So, you had the diagram for sphygmomammometer also, no? So, you must be able to know the difference between the two, yes? Because they may ask you to identify the process. So, you should be able to understand the difference. And with this, of course, we have marked all the important diagrams from life process. Very simple and easy. Have you all marked it? Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> it's actually very easy. Right? Are we ready, everybody? Have you all marked it? Yes. Okay. All right. So now that you have all marked this, right? Very good. So now that you have all marked it, now the next thing that we're going to do is to look at the diagrams that we need to know, right? So how do we draw these diagrams? That is what we need to know. Now some of these diagrams are very simple, okay? So I'm going to go back and actually I'm going to start from the beginning, right? So I'm going to draw all the diagrams and again with basics of diagrams like I told you, right? It's very simple and easy. You need to make sure they're proportionate, make it clean, do the labelings. Trust me, the rest of it becomes super simple and easy. Now, of course, before I get started, I really hope all of you have hit that like button and subscribe button to this video. Yes? Okay. So the first one that we're going to draw is structure of stomata, right? Thank you, Colorful Life. Thank you. So the first one we are going to draw is structure of stomata. Now structure of stomata is again something that you know um, we've been learning right from 6th grade, 7th grade, right? It's not like structure of stomata is something very difficult or something that is very new, right? So structure of stomata is a very simple one. So I want to quickly draw it. Now when you are drawing, first you start with this, right? Draw the... Let me use maybe another color, right? Okay, so very quickly you can draw it with me. So here you draw two kidney shaped cells. Then this inner part that is there, if you see your textbook also. See, you need not draw it with me right now, right? You can just keep referring to your textbooks, yes? And I want everyone to focus in the class. It should not be ki, ah, ma'am is drawing, so I'll keep talking about something else. Please stay focused, my wonderful students. So here, as you can see, is this stomata an open stomata or a closed stomata? Now, another part where you can struggle is by making the shapes equal, okay? Try your best as much as they look equal, but it need not be like copy-paste of it. Yes, this is an open stomata, right? So this is an open stomatal pore, right? Now, if you think of it, right? If you think of it, the inner parts, I want you to focus on the drawing in your textbook as I have it with me. The inner parts here are thickened. The dark green that you see, no? Those are the thickened parts which are there and I would like you to thicken it, right? And then, of course, I would suggest that you can draw the nucleus that is there, right? And then, of course, the surrounding cells, okay? And if you draw these surrounding cells, which we call as, you know, like the subsidiary cells, you are good to go. Open stomata, closed stomata. Draw two things, easy peasy, you are good to go. For closed one, see, this is sturgeon. For it to be closed, you need to make it flaccid, right? So you need to keep the bean shaped cells but you'll have to keep it flaccid. So try to keep them as close as possible so that they look flaccid and then again put your surrounding ones which are there. Right? And then you can draw the nucleus that is there. Do the inner thickenings. Right? Make the thickenings and then you have the closed stomata as well. Easy peasy, no? Okay, now let's quickly move on to the next diagram which is a holozoic mode of nutrition in amoeba. Now how many of you find this diagram to be tough, right? How many of you find this diagram ma'am, nutrition in amoeba is very tough? Do any of you find it that way? Do we need to show respiration in it? No, we don't need to show it. You just need to know structure. Mene banali, awesome. 
Okay, so now we are going to do nutrition in amoeba. So whichever I said they may ask you to draw, that is what I am going to draw, right? Yes, okay. So now first and foremost, you have to draw amoeba. And like I told you in the previous class also, if you get questions based on amoeba, it is the easiest because amoeba does not really have a definite structure. So first you will draw amoeba, put nucleus, put the food here. Then we know that when it comes in contact with the food, it will, you know, the pseudopodia will move out or it will project out to engulf it, right? So it will engulf it. Keep this here. You have the food particle. Then what will happen? What is step number? What is the next step? Yes? What is the next step after this? Very quickly in the chat. What is the next step? Pseudopodia are nothing but false feet. Right? That is what we mean by pseudopodia. Food sac or formation. So here you can draw the... Here you will have to label the food vacuole, right? So we see that a food vacuole will be formed. And once the food vacuole is formed, we know that it gets digested inside it. And then it will move on to different parts. We know absorption takes place. And last step, which of course might be behind me. So I'm going to put it here. In the end, we know that all the waste material is ingested out. Okay, so in, uh, ingestion, digestion, ab uh, absorption, assimilation and ingestion. Very easy. Yes? Okay. Now, make a note of these things the way I have drawn it. I have made it as easy as possible. Right? Now, we will move on. Oh, wait. Let me add some more slides so that you we can draw some more. Next, we will draw human digestive system. See, I'm being very fast with all of this so that you will be able to make a note of how I am drawing it. Okay. The next part of today's class is to understand how to draw. No, so you have to stay focused in understanding that as well. So we will do the human digestive system. Yes. Now, human digestive system is very easy. Okay. Like of the lot of all the diagrams, it is the easiest to draw. And I think I've drawn human digestive system before also. Yes? Okay. Ma'am, which all are more likely to come? So I think, Manoj, if you rewind this video itself, I have, I think you've just joined the class. So I have made you mark, right? What all, um, you know, what all diagrams are important for drawing and what all diagrams are important for diagram-based questions. Yes? Are we clear everyone? Are you all with me? Are you all with me? Yes? And once again, a very happy Children's Day to all of you. Yes? Okay. I just need some amount, some more time of yours and we'll wind this up quickly. Okay? Yes, all of you stay focused in class. Okay? Very good. You're all amazing children. You're all amazing. It's your day today. So happy Children's Day, right? Yes. So stay focused. Even if you know how to draw it, it's okay. Draw it with me. You can practice once again. No? Don't worry about it. Even if we know it, it's always good that we keep practicing. Yes? Very good. Very good. So now with human digestive system, we just need to start. Mainly the elementary canal is what you will have to draw. Right? So here you can draw the buccal cavity. Then here you have the stomach, I mean the esophagus. Now, I'm going to move the heading because I will need more place to draw this. So, I'm going to keep it here. So, you draw the buccal cavity and then, of course, you will draw the esophagus. Now, from here, if you see, you will then draw the flattened J-shaped stomach in this manner. Right? Now, of course, I have an additional line there in between, but don't worry. Okay? That will always be there. I'm not able to... I mean, in my case, if I erase one thing, everything will go. Right? Yes, all right. So you will draw the stomach and stop. Okay. Now after this, what I will recommend is that you draw the large intestine. Okay. So draw the large intestine and then you will draw the vermiform appendix. Draw it. So you make this first, right? So you make this part and then you connect and start making the small intestine. 
Now, small intestine just requires many loopy loops on the inside, okay? So, you can make a few loopy loops like this and then, of course, we are good to go, right? So, make some loopy loops in this manner and we are good to go. Then, all you need to do is to draw the leaf-like pancreas and the liver, right? Now, the positioning is very, very important. Draw, don't draw the liver in front of the stomach. Don't draw it like this, okay? Don't overlap it, right? So, make sure that you draw a clean label diagram. And with this, of course, everything has become easy, no? All you need to do is to then label it. So, you have the buccal cavity here. Of course, I'm going a little faster, but of course, I'm sure that all of you have understood this. So, we have buccal cavity, we have esophagus, then we have the stomach. Then here, of course, we have the liver. We have pancreas. The large intestine. Small intestine. Then you can mark the rectum. And the anus. Are we clear, everyone? Yes, hello Rehan, hello. Are we clear with this? Ma'am, what is the meaning of synthesis? Synthesis means to combine and to produce, right? Yes, okay. So now as you know in this case, two things to remember, it need not be as exactly, oops, I forgot one structure. I forgot the gallbladder, right? So I missed out on that part. So then you have the gallbladder. So let me quickly label that. Okay. So with this, of course, as you understand, all diagrams need to not look exactly how they are in the textbook. All it needs to be is giving the accurate content. Now we will move on to respiratory system. Now respiratory system is a very easy one. I'll quickly show you how to draw the structure of alveolus and we'll wind up with a heart diagram. Okay. All right. So now we will move on to structure of alveolus, right? Now what can you tell me about the alveolus? Yes? What can you tell me about it? Everyone in the chat, you've all learnt about this, no? This is, it is very easy, exactly. So we will do this in two minutes. What is an alveolus? Yes, it is a balloon-like structure or an air sac-like structure. So that is exactly what you have to draw. So here, as you can see, take your time with this. Kind of like a tomato, right? Air sac-like structure. And what happens in the alveolus? Can you tell me what happens in the alveolus? What process takes place inside the alveolus? Very good. They are richly supplied with blood vessels and they are so thin that they are just made up of a single layer of cells as well. So what you see that I am drawing is nothing but a single layer of cells. The inner lining is just made up of a single layer. Right? My name is Aishwarya. Very good. It, it, it is responsible for increasing the surface area or because they are, they are so small and tiny, we see that it increases surface area for gaseous exchange, right? So now what you need to do is to draw. See, I'm not using any multicolors because this is how you will have to end up drawing in your exam, no? So even if you use your pencil, just take some time and draw it, yes? So what is diffusion? Diffusion is nothing but the movement of molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of its lower concentration. So in the case of gases, we see that there is movement in the case of oxygen. Oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into the bloodstream and we see that in the case of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide diffuses from the bloodstream into the alveoli. So this right here is a blood capillary. Right? So you can mark that. This is a blood capillary. And here what you can show is, you can show some 
molecules like this right which shows the blood uh, the rbc's that are there and here what you can do is you can have o2 and draw the arrow inwards and you can have co2 and draw the arrow outwards so this right here shows on how to you know this right here talks about how gaseous exchange takes place are we clear yes alveolus ko hindi mein kya kehte hain mera hindi to utna achhi nahi hai to i will not know so i'll get back to you i'll ask saurav sir or ankita ma'am when i'll ask you what is called in hindi okay yes so the explanation video is already done sweet uh, sweetie i think ankita ma'am has already taken a class on this so we are just doing a revision yes now of course uh, as you know for alveoli someone was asking me ma'am what is diffusion uh, what is uh, diffusion right so diffusion that is there as i already told you osmosis is again movement of water molecules from region to higher concentration to lower concentration but across a semi permeable membrane and that's amazing vaishnavi that you've gotten selected right i'm sure you are very happy and excited so i'll see you very soon then right Okay yes Rehan yes yes okay so we are clear with alveoli no now very quickly i want you to tell me shall we do excretory system first and then heart ka diagram shall we do that shall i do human excretory system and nephron structure first and then i will move on to heart diagram because chances of heart diagram coming are much lesser when compared to excretory system okay brain brain ka tanmay i have already taken another class right i have already taken a different class so what i will do is you can check that video out yes okay daily class hota hai yes of course anshika class hota hai aap channel ko subscribe kar lo you will get notifications yes ma'am have you wished us i have of course wished all of you i think rashid you are joined i think midway and i think lot of students have joined midway so very quickly to all my beautiful brilliant students happy children's day right it is your day keep shining keep smiling and of course lots of love to all of you yes I think a lot of you have just joined now so I'm very very sorry if you felt like I didn't wish you happy children's day to all of you okay lots and lots of love right ma'am you have not wished rashid i did no i think you joined a little late i wished right in the beginning i think some of them were already some of them who had joined in the beginning of the class they were all there but i'm going to wish you once again please don't feel that way yes okay oh that's amazing vaishnavi that is amazing right all right very good very good yes so my name is ashwarya i think some of you are coming to my class for the first time so i primarily teach biology and of course in your 9th and 10th grade channel as well as in 6 to 8 i also take social science classes as well so kon hu main main ek primarily ek biology educator hu aur social science bhi padhati hu right okay now moving on to human excretory system right so this right here is very very important for a lot of you so we are going to be looking at human excretory system now to be honest human excretory system is actually easy it is not very complicated but nephron also if you think about it no like it's a simple diagram which you can easily learn right so first and foremost what is the structure of kidney right what is the structure of the kidney what shape is it we've already don drawn this shape a little earlier no yes oh zara i am very very sorry okay very sorry now what structure is it bean shaped exactly so bean like so earlier when we drew the guard cells also they had those kidney bean shape like structure right so again you need to draw two of it so first you draw one and then you need to draw the second now will you draw the second kidney right next to it or will you do it slightly above what will you do will you put the second kidney right next to it here or will you put it little above what would you do is it going to be above and below or side by side slightly upper exactly so you will put it slightly upper because you know that the kidneys are placed little up and down right to be to get accommodated in the body so here as you know we will put this slightly above does not mean that i will draw it here okay don't do that 
just make a mark so if it helps you what i normally do is i'll put a mark like this just a little above so that i know where i have to draw and then i will draw my kidney now as you know it's very tough to draw these kidney shaped structures so you can take your time with this right so you can take a little bit of time to draw it so the kidneys are placed above and below so that it can be structured properly right so within the body you have so many organs that are there no so for it to accommodate everything we see that it is placed up and below and can you all tell me which organ does it accommodate or why it's placed up and below i gave you a general answer but why is it up and below can you all tell me yes Can you all tell me in the chat? I told you it accommodates something. No, what does it accommodate? That is what I want you to tell me. Which organ does it accommodate in the body? Which is the reason why it is placed above and below? Yes, very good, very good. Our textbook has it side to side. I know that I wanted to check this. That's why I was looking at the diagram. It's given correctly only. It's not very prominent. Not large intestine. Not the large intestine, okay? Yes. So now, of course, once you draw this, the next thing that I will tell you is to, of course, erase your invisible, you know, line and then draw the ureter. Okay. So I'd suggest that you draw the ureter first and then you draw the other structures. So we will draw the ureter. And then, of course, we have the urinary bladder. So we know that urinary bladder here is a muscular organ, right? So here we see that it's a muscular organ, it's a muscular bag-like structure which stores the urine and then of course you have the urethra. Now of course for one reason that you need to do is of course to draw the blood vessels also. So you know that you have the renal artery and the renal vein so you will have to draw both, okay? And mark it as well. So in this case, if you see, we have the, you can mark it accordingly as renal artery and renal vein. Okay. So here, as you know, we have the kidney. Then here we have the ureter. Then we have the, you know, urinary bladder. And this opening right here is the urethra. Okay. Yes. Then of course here you will have to draw. See, don't label this as your renal artery or renal vein. Okay. Be very careful. The branch that is here, no, this part that I'm telling you about. So here, this portion, that is the renal artery and vein that branches out in and so that it can enter into the kidney. That is what is the renal artery. And the one that is here, you can label it as renal vein. So you make sure that this is the part that branches into the kidney and not the main one. Yes? Okay. Are we clear with this? Human excretory system has become easy peasy. Okay, ma'am, ban gaya. Very good, very good. Yes. So if you're finding this class helpful, no, if all of you are finding this class very helpful because I know with biology, the main thing or the main challenge that comes are the diagrams, no? So I know some of you get very worried about that. Okay, so now I want you to tell you, now this is the time where I'm going to tell you that it's not very complicated. Just take your time to understand how to draw it and the rest of it becomes easy. Yes? And if you find this class helpful, then you know what you should do. No, like this video for me and subscribe to the channel. Okay? Yes. Okay. Hello, intelligent boy. Okay, it's very cold there and I hope that you are taking care of yourself. Heart card diagram. Yes. So we will now do human heart for those of you who get so worried. Now here's a disclaimer for all of you with human heart, especially no chances of it coming to draw are very slim. Okay. Because even I remember when I was in school, a lot of the time, no, you find that human heart doesn't really come to draw rather than to label or they ask you diagram based questions. Yes. Which is why I think it's important that you understand this. But of course, if in case some of you have, uh, you know, some of you have, how you know, had this in your exam, I'll help you out with the human heart. Okay. All right. So for human heart, one thing to understand is that 
the basic structure if you know you know that human heart has four chambers it has valves no so these valves that are there are very important yes so please stay focused now the first thing that you have to do when you are drawing the human heart is and for this i might use some color because otherwise you will be confused draw the basic ventricles okay so i'm going to erase this labeling because i might need it so first thing you do is to draw the ventricles like this so here as you can see i've made a roughly triangular one but i'm making it till i am happy with the basic outline now the next thing we will do is to start from the right side right so from the right we are going to start okay so we will make the right atrium now the right atrium that is there receives blood from vena cava right so you have a superior and a inferior vena cava so you need to now draw that so here's the lining so they have given you with a lining inside so we are going to do it with that so here you have the superior the this is the you know inferior vena cava that is there this is your superior but you don't need to label it now you can label it towards the end so now when you draw this border right so from here what i would suggest whoops that went away draw a flap okay this right here is the first uh, you know valve that we are going to draw and can you tell me which valve is there on the right side yes which valve is present on the right side bet between the right atrium and the right ventricle which is the valve what does it mean what what it means right are you asking what does this mean the heart or what are you asking are you asking me what does the valve mean right what is the difference between superior and inferior superior vena cava brings deoxygenated blood from the upper parts of the body right while the inferior vena cava that is there brings it from the lower side is it bicuspid or tricuspid tri cuspid right tri is on this side bi is on this side yes very good so we find the tri cuspid valve right so you draw the first valve here now you have you know that valves are structures like this no so you draw one flap and you keep it so you draw the flap like this but you also know that from the right ventricle you have pulmonary artery which is going to come so what will you do you will use this extension right here from this manner and you will make the pulmonary artery so here as you can see i have made the pulmonary artery now you can make branch it as much as you want to but i suggest that you don't overly branch it as well so as you can see here you have the pulmonary artery now pulmonary artery also has flaps that go inwards right so this right here again is very important so this right here oops sorry so here you have your pulmonary artery you have your flaps and then you draw it okay so this has this has now branched into two are we clear so far are we clear yes this much is clear on how to draw no you have drawn your right side you know right you have vena cava here you have pulmonary artery we are all good to go ma'am no then you can just i will do it once again don't worry okay yes okay all right yes so now i think uh, these outlines you can draw towards the end all right okay so now next what you need to do is your right side is more or less sorted you have done all the important ones now is the left side left side is also pretty simple okay so left side you know you have the left atrium then you have the left ventricle so here you will draw the flap now here focus on making sure that the muscle this part there is more gap because you know that the left ventricle that is there is more there ma'am aap complicate kar rahe ho how many of you are finding this complicated i will do an easier version of this diagram also i am sticking to what is there an ncrt yes how many of you are finding this tougher any of you who are finding it tougher i want to take a minute okay shravani is finding it tough okay all right yes you will be able to understand are you finding this tougher for those of you no some of you are saying ma'am no i'm finding it easy yes not tough 
Okay, see, I'm taking you step by step for those of you who are there. No, what I will tell you is I'll help you out with an easier one. Okay, don't worry about it. Don't get worried that ma'am, you are very tough. Kar rahe ho. No, don't worry. So now, again, remember on the left side when you are drawing, you have ventricle, right? So you draw the flap. So take it this way. Draw the flap and then make sure that the muscle region is left more because left ventricle, of course, you know that the walls of the ventricles are thicker on the left side than on the right side. So you've drawn your left ventricle also. Now this is the tricky part, okay? This is the only tricky part which I also struggle sometimes, okay? I will not lie to you all. I struggle here myself, right? So now here what happens is that, see, you need to draw the aorta as well, no? You need to make place for the aorta. So what I do is I will draw a flap, okay? So I have made, you know, I have done the left part of it. Now I also have the aorta which is branching out. So I make the aorta like this, okay? Now from here on this side, I know that inside has flaps. So one flap here and I am done. Now this part is the only tricky part in my understanding. So once you have done this, I have made the aorta. It has branched, right? And then this will go. Aorta also is complete, okay? Now here if you see, this part also is done. So your left side is done and your right side is done then all you need to do is to make sure that you do the lining of it, right? So you can do the lining in this manner, okay? Draw the linings like this. So I'm going to thicken it so that you understand it better. So here you have the aorta, which I am coloring now. So I'm coloring these vessels. So these, this is the aorta. This is your left ventricle. But this is not complete yet because you know that my heart is not done. It's still half open. So here you have your left atrium. So as you can see, you have the aorta here. You have the pulmonary artery here. You have the pulmonary vein. You have the vena cava. And you have your four chambers. How many of you, where are the chambers? I have labeled the chambers. Right atrium, left atrium. Right ventricle, left ventricle. From there, these two vessels are emerging. Upper part looks like roots. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Ma'am, can you repeat once again? All right. Okay. Yes. Okay. For those of you who want, who are asking me about control coordination, no? Control coordination, if you are watching my one shot, I'm telling you, it's enough. It's very simple. It's very easy. Yes? Now, for those of you who are like, ma'am, I want an easier diagram, there is an easier one, okay? So, this is what I've learned in school, right? So, what I used to do is, we used to make the, we used to make it something like this, okay? So, we would make the vessels like this, right? So, first, we used to make all of our uh, chambers, to be something like this and we used to have it in this fashion something of this sort and then from here we used to draw tubes coming out like this this is so complicated exactly which is why I didn't want to do this one okay so are we clear with human heart have we found it easy right have we found it easy? Yes, double circulation also. See, now double circulation, which one is septum? This part is septum right here. This region is the septum, right? That is the septum. Easy. Now, next one is double circulation. Same thing. Now, with double circulation, if you see, no? Heart ka diagram has become easy, right? This one is easy. I know. For heart, again, there are two ways of doing double circulation. One is if they ask you for schematic diagram, then you can draw with a box, okay? Heart ka diagram can also be done with a box where you show it like a circuit, right? So, for double circulation, you can do a schematic diagram, but they'll not ask you for a technical one. But if they ask you for a technical one, no? If you see, draw the heart again like this. Draw the, you know, draw the heart as you see. Wait, let me just draw it, make it smaller maybe. Okay, 
So now one basic heart ka diagram we are all able to draw, right? All easy peasy. Yes. So I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for all of you. Okay. All right. Then we can see here again. Now from here, if you look at your diagram, no, what they have done is they have put the pulmonary artery from here and they have also put the aorta from here, right? They have shown the aorta looping out like this. Yes. So this is where your pulmonary artery goes. Okay. And then after that, this of course will be complete in this kind of a fashion. They have not drawn it very properly in your textbook. I will tell you right in your textbook. As you can see, this is a very complicated diagram. Which is why what I would recommend is the simple version of it where you draw the heart, right? So draw the heart like this. Okay, keep the heart as a structure. We'll keep the flaps and all of it, right? So we are only going to keep the four chambers, okay? We are not keeping anything else. Then from here, we will draw these things, okay? So we're just drawing hypothetical ones. And then we will show the capillaries or else again, I'm not very happy with this diagram. So what I will do is I will make a schematic diagram. Shall we do with that? Shall we go with the schematic diagram? Sim schematic diagram is easier. No, for double circulation, because again, for double circulation, this is what if they ask you as a, you know, five mark question, this is all you need to draw a schematic diagram that represents it. Yes. We'll do a schematic diagram like a circuit. We can draw with a flow chart, right? As lungs. Then of course, from here, you bring it back. Then from here again, you can show it going to the body. And then here back again, right? This one will come from here. Sorry. This one would do. Okay. So here again, you have the body brings deoxygenated blood, right? So we see that it brings deoxygenated blood from different parts, pours it into the right atrium. This will pour it into the right ventricle, which will pump it to the lungs through the pulmonary artery. And from the pulmonary artery, we see that it will go to the lungs where it gets oxygenated. Then we see that oxygenated blood will be transported by the pulmonary vein into the left atrium that will pour it into the left ventricle that will then pump it through the aorta to different parts. Yes. Are we clear everybody? Are we clear with double circulation? Yes. Are we clear? It was helpful. No, see, I tried to do this, but I find this to be very complicated. But again, Sanjana, because you have asked me about double uh, the schematic representation, what I would suggest is that this could come for labeling. So make sure that you go through the diagram for labeling it. Okay. Yes. Okay. John is here for the first time. So please make sure, John, you subscribe to our channel and like this video. So with this, of course, everybody, we come to the end of today's class, right? So as you know, today we mainly covered some of the important diagrams that are there. And of course, in the beginning of the class, as you all know, in case if you have missed it out, I have given you all the important diagrams. DBQ here stands for diagram based questions, right? So whether you are going to get this diagram for a diagram based question or to draw is what I have written here. So I will share this with you. So please don't make, please, I'll share this with you on Telegram so you can stay subscribed, okay, to our channel and subscribe to the Telegram channel as well, right? Okay, ma'am, I'm really bad at drawing diagrams. For those of you who were, who feel that ma'am, I'm, you know, bad at draw, drawing diagrams, only way to go is practice, 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 right? As you study biology, what I would suggest is you don't say that I will study now and draw diagrams later. It doesn't really work. As you learn how to, when you are studying a concept, learn by drawing it. If you are studying digestive system, draw the digestive system and do it. Keep, see, one or two times you will have to see the textbook. Okay, third time try to see without seeing the textbook and see where you made the mistake. So as you do it, it will definitely help you out. Yes? Okay. So with this, of course, we come to the end of today's class, right? So as you know that we have got you covered no matter what, I'll be sharing this with you on Telegram. So please make sure that, you know, you stay subscribed to our channel. Okay.
Ma'am, can they ask lymphatic system? No, they'll not ask you lymphatic system. They'll ask you questions based on lymph, but not lymphatic system. Ma'am, rose 10 minute do diagram to chalega. Ha, zaru chalega. 10 10 minute bus. Utna hi, right? But again, see, diagram like I told you today was exclusively for live processes. But earlier in my session also, I've told you diagram based questions for all chapters, whether it is physics, chemistry, biology, for science as a whole, if you learn the important diagrams, it will definitely help you, right? Yes, all right, everybody. So with this, I think I will wind up. I will see you very soon, right? So please make sure you like this video, share this with your friends and stay subscribed to our channel. Hoping to see you all very, very soon again. Bye-bye and have a nice day.